Welcome back to Profile. My guest is Jamaican artist, musician, you know, reggae and dance all artist, choreographer Nadine Sutherland. And yes. we have been talking about first your new single and then the fact that you did a master's mm -hmm. and um, how that connected with you getting the job afterwards in the performing arts school. Right. And you were able to do, as you were saying earlier in the segment before, for other students, for students, um, what happened to you when you were younger? Mm -hmm. How, how a bigger job was that? How did the job make you feel? Um, initially, when I got the job, you know, there was a sense of, sense of nervousness. I remember coming from Spain. I just did Rotterdam, and I was like straight into the job. But then I realized that my training in Jamaica was basically I was able to execute everything that I learned here. We're big enough in terms of our performing arts stuff that, that are available. First and foremost, I did dancing, I did ballet and modern dance. I was always, everybody knows me as a champion bubbler. <laughs> Actually, I'm not a certified dancer where ballet and modern dance is concerned, but I am a, I did those dancing. So by the time I went there, I was aware of Alvin Ailey. And um, I had friends in the dance fraternity. So, I did an audition for my performing arts group, you know, excitement and everything. I was so excited. I was like, okay, let's audition the kids. That was my idea. We have to audition them because that's is part and parcel of what you're going to do in terms of moving forward. Yes. So we had our audition and there was this little boy called Malachi Kingston. Probably the Kingston would have, should have shown me something that his destiny was just carved out and was interlaced with, with me being there. Malachi was learning modern dance off YouTube. And this boy, during the audition, I started to cry because I could not believe this kid. I was like, do you go to dance classes? No, you too. What happened is that one of my friends at that time, Dawana Smallwood, um, just got a job, not just got a job, just came back from her job from the mm -hmm. Oprah Winfrey Academy. Um, Dawana, da Dawana is named in Vogue magazine as the third, as, there's three dancers who are like the three world best. She with Mikhail Barishkunov, a same name, some, some slush name, <laughs> Judy Jameson and Dawana. Dawana was a principal dancer for Alvin Ailey. She went and she danced Cry, which is an Alvin Ailey classic on Oprah. Oprah snatched her up and made her the director for her performing arts mm -hmm. in South Africa. By the time I went to New York, Dawana was leaving, Dawana left. Um, Oprah Winfrey Academy, and with the blessings of Oprah, opened up her academy in Brooklyn. By the time I went to that school now and saw that little boy, I was like, this is a special kid. Like, everybody would have looked at me and said, a little girl, you're always a sing. I went to the one and I said, there's a little boy here, and he's gifted, and I really would like him to audition for your school, which is like, can you imagine Dawana, principal dancer, Alvin Ailey, name in Vogue magazine as one of the best modern dancer. And I took that kid and he auditioned and he got the part. I hollered for days because I was like, okay, this is what I'm doing. I'm so invested in this and all of that. Did the, the, did the job at any point feel intimidating though? No, because everything that I knew from Jamaica I was executing. The last of the delicate air that Mrs. Marley made me do voice training with, I- Mrs. Rita Marley. Mrs. Rita Marley. Um, I was training the kids. I also did voice training here with Marjorie Wiley. So everything that I did, I was able to be pouring into those children in terms of making them into performing arts artists, which basically when you have those foundation, you can do any music at all. You can sing anything. You can sing hip hop, but your voice is strained. You can um, do hip hop dancing, which that was part of the curriculum also, apart from modern and uh, African dance. So let me give you, I have to finish the story in Malachi Kingston. So I brought in the Alvin Ailey dance um, educational program into the school. So we started a dance program. So all these kids are just getting into the performing arts and music with me. And uh, I started, the program of uh, training them to go into performing arts high school, LaGuardia being the number one. So during the summer, in like training them into to a level, they went to the Alvin Ailey summer camp. Malachi Kingston, after going to that summer camp, Alvin Ailey started to look at him and actually wanted him 
to pluck him and say, okay, we want to start groom you to be an Alvin Ailey dancer. This is a young kid. So that's again was just something that I was so super proud about. The one I was like, no, <laughs> you're not going anywhere. You stay with me, so. So all That's of the experiences that you had in Jamaica and the network that you built the up working that I built in the history up. over the years. Yes, I was able to just execute that. By the time I went to New York, I knew everything, where to go, who to source, you know, speak to, you know, the dancers that I knew, dancers that were my friends. I would just source it and just was making my kids. I wanted my kids to be the best. And, and they were, at that point, they looked like they were going to be the best. And the link here between what you're doing now or what you did recently um, and your past is that you had all of these, your, your own experiences as a child star, mm -hmm. winning the Taste of, um, 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 Talent contest. First winner. After, first winner. <laughs> first winner, beating Yellow Man, <laughs> King Yellow Man. Um, among other stars. Among other amazing stars. Among yeah. other amazing stars. Then going on to work with Bob Marley, mm -hmm. Peter Tosh, mm -hmm. Rita Marley. I mean, the, the list of people you've worked with sounds like a who's who of Jamaican music. When you look back at that kind of history, how do you feel? I feel proud. I, f I feel proud right now. Like, you know, I've embraced my history a lot. There are moments that I've forgotten it. There are moments when I struggled, you know, in terms of who I was, and you know, I felt the music forgot me and everything. But then, you know, sometimes when I look back and I'm like, you know, nobody can ever take away my history and what happened to me and who I worked with. I mean, when I look back in working with Peter, and I love to tell the story of Peter Touch, and I tell the story of Peter Touch because a lot of people have Peter Touch as just like, bad man forward, bad man, you know, Peter Touch. You said in one of your interviews, the that. original bounty killer. Yeah. The original Before Bounty. I was a little girl that had never done background vocals in my life, went into the studio, and this man was a kindness to me. I mean, I froze. I froze. Because, you know, I'm here with, you know, big people, and here I am, a little sixth former from St. Andrew High School for Girls, singing with these... You know, even if I was a child star, these are adults, and I remember I just could not sing the note. I couldn't sing the harmony, and I was singing harmony from Above Rocks with... Miss Daisy singing the, the, the altar at the New Testament Church of God. But... Above Rocks was where you grew up. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Peter was so loving and kind to me. He was like, make her sing this, mom, make her sing. And I sang the easy part. Every time I listen to Nuclear War album and I hear my voice going, we don't need no nuclear war. <laughs> I always think of Peter Tosh because he was so kind to me. He was so kind. So I always want to repeat that story because I want people to have a full total impression of who this man was, instead of some people have him off as this probably, you know, ruffian, which he had that side, we ain't gonna dispute that. But he was a kind and loving paternal person. Peter Tosh went to my father and asked him for me to sing on his album. So that's the kind of man I saw. No, apart from Peter Tosh, as I said, a, a who's who of Jamaican music. But we spend a lot of time sometimes, I realize, in, in, you know, in talking with you, talking about other people. Right. I want to spend a fair amount of time in the next segment talking about what inspires you as an artist yourself. And also, you know, this element of dancing, because, you know, people know you so much for the singing that sometimes people forget at all, as you said yourself, the champion bubbler, your love choreography, <laughs> you know, different types of, I do. you know, you, you dabble in all kinds of different arts. So that is where we're going to go. But for the moment, we're going to be taking the break on profile. My guest is Jamaican artist, musician, reggae artist, dancehall artist, choreographer, and producer, Nadine Sutherland. And we are back after these messages. Mm -hmm. 